Um, that's a that's a good place to pause. Okay. That's a good place to pause. So, um, Priscilla and and Aquila are they're super powerful uh, people, and and we get to hear a lot more about them and um, and how they've always been a great support to the gospel. And so this is this is literally like where they're introduced, and um, and it's kind of funny, you know. It's like they they share the same um, profession. Mm -hmm. And so it's no wonder that, you know, that they really, they kind of had that uh, connection. Of course, you know, they, they um, were Jewish and clearly they were ready to accept the Messiah as well. But, but as all that's happening, Paul is able to share this, um, to share his, um, his profession with them, his career, his, his, uh, how his he trade. made money. His trade. That's right. Thank you, Jen. Right. And then tent makers could also um, be called like leather workers. So like tent makers, leather workers, that type of profession is what they um, what they had in common. And it gave them a form of income to kind of uh, supplement the ministry, really, to be able to earn a living as they are traveling. Yeah. And be a blessing to others. And, you know, it's it was just fantastic, you know, that anyway, I, I just love, I love all the little details. It's like how, how wonderful that God literally put them together. You know, the apostle Paul and, and, and Aquila had the same trade. And, um, and so it just, it just made sense. You can kind of just see how, how they would be, they would be fast friends. And, um, and so obviously they, and then they travel, they kept traveling on together. So, um, so they, they got along well. Um, and then I, I like how it in verse 4 he started talking about, and every Sabbath, every Sabbath, Paul went to the synagogue. And, and um, you know, it's, it's interesting. We were, I think, uh, Jen and I went to a training hmm, the week before last, and, and they were talking about that. They were, you know, they're like, hey, there's a lot of people in the churches, right? I mean, they, obviously they're talking about synagogues here, but there are a lot of people in the churches that are like kind of asleep in Christ. And, mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with going to the church. I mean, it's like, I know we need to talk to about, about Jesus to people outside the church, but you know what? We can also go to the church and we can talk to people about Jesus and what he's done for us and, and try to wake them up. Um, I know sometimes when I meet people who are just like on fire for Christ, I'm like, whoo, you know, it's just, yeah, you like catch it. You, you catch it just by close contact. And, um, and so it says that, you know, that, that the apostle Paul went to the synagogue to try to persuade Jews and Greeks. Um, and then Silas and Timothy came. That was kind of fun too. And it said, then Paul began devoting himself completely to the word. So I, does that mean to you, Jen, that like he kind of took a break from tent making? Um, I think so. Maybe that he, um, he went full, he went full uh, evangelical or not evangelical. What is the word? Evangelist? Evangelist. Yes. He I went wish. full evangelist. Yeah. He's like, all right. I've, I've got, I've got enough, you know, maybe he did enough or whatever, um, that he was able to, uh, to do, um, to just, it says to go completely, um, to, oh, devoting himself completely to the word. So, um, it said, John just put a, a comment down and he said, we're getting an echo from Jen. So, um, hold on one second. Let me see if I can if I can grab my tech guy. So, um, so Jen, I, Jen, do you hear an echo by chance? I, I don't hear an echo. Okay. All right. So, all right. Well, we'll see if, uh, John, I don't know if, are you still hearing that echo? Oh, Paul says he doesn't hear it. Okay. Well, there you go. All right. Well, as long as, uh, oh, it says that she's louder. So Jen, you're louder than I am. And so, <laughs> I'll whisper, John. I'll whisper. <laughs> it is complicated. 
um, to make us the same um, the same voice level. So, because um, we're in two different places. So anyway, technology, technology. We're getting there. We're getting there. Um, so, yep, so back to the Apostle Paul, um, it says that he was testifying to the Jews that Jesus was Christ, but in verse 6, they resisted, they blasphemed, and it surely looked like the Apostle Paul had kind of had it. Is that kind of how you read it, Jen? Absolutely, that he, um, you know, when he talks about shaking off the dust from his robe, it's kind of what we heard when um, Jesus was sending out uh the apostles right when he mm -hmm. was talking about that you know they should shake the dust off of their feet mm -hmm. um, if they're treated badly move on to the next town and shake off the dust so it's kind of the same thing it's kind of like a done with you kind of <laughs> scenario <laughs> well you know just like the the saying um, you can't beat a dead horse or you shouldn't beat a dead horse um so, you know, it's just if you keep going over it and you keep going over it and they just resist and they resist and you just start feeling like you're talking to a wall, um, then I guess that's where the Apostle Paul was um, yeah. with, these, with and, these folks. And he's kind of like saying, like, I've done my best. I've done everything I can. I kind of, you know, it's whatever happens from now on is, you know, on you. I've given you all the tools, I've told you everything you need to know and you still will not believe, then your eternity is your own fault. Yeah, yeah, and that's, you know, we we talk about, um, in the training we talk about like our, um, our responsibility um, when people react, um, when we tell them about the gospel and, and we, we talk about our, uh, a stoplight, right? Or, or traffic light, sorry and red and yellow and green and it's like if if you get the green then talk about the gospel if you get the yellow and they're like well maybe i'm interested then keep following up see you know see if they if they will become um a green light but if it's a red light and they're just not interested in any way shape or form um you know you've done your job you have told them about the gospel, you've talked to them about Jesus, and their reaction is their reaction. And you know, you can't you can't beat them into submission. I yeah. Otherwise we would have already tried that. <laughs> so them or something. Yeah. So, you know, because we, we hate to see we hate to see people, you know, not um, not accepting Jesus, but if they are if they give you that that red light, if they say no, thank you, um, and especially if they say it over and over again, like the Apostle Paul um, clearly experienced, then what else can you do? Um, you know, you you need to you need to keep moving on. It's not that you don't love them. It's not that you don't want them saved, um, but you can pray and find people who are yellow lights who are green lights um who are hungry and ready for the word of god so all right well we will pick up back in verse 7 of acts 18. great after that he stayed with titus justice a gentile who worshiped god and lived next door to the synagogue Crypus, the leader of the synagogue, and all his household believed in the Lord. Many others in Corinth also became believers and were baptized. One night, the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision and told him, Don't be afraid. Speak out. Don't be silent, for I am with you, and no one will harm you because many people here in this city belong to me. So Paul stayed there for the next year and a half, teaching the word of God. But when Gallio became governor of Acacia, some Jews rose in, con in concentrated action against Paul and brought him before the governor for judgment. They accused Paul of persuading people to worship God in ways that are contrary to the law. But just as Paul started to make his defense, Gallio turned to Paul's accusers and said, Listen, you Jews, if this were a case involving some wrongdoing or a serious crime, 
I would be obli ob obliged to listen to you. But since it is merely a question of words and names and your Jewish laws, you take care of it. I refuse to judge such matters. And he drove them out of the courtroom. The mob had grabbed, so we just went over this word, so Sothensius, sure, the leader of the synagogue and had beaten him right there in the courtroom. But Galileo paid no attention. <laughs> Quite the guy, right? Quite the guy. <clears throat> Quite the judge, I guess. Um, he clearly didn't, he didn't have time for everything, that's for sure. But um, when we go back and, and talk about in verse 7, um, you know, these are, again, like just some logistics that the Apostle Paul um, experienced. And, and I, you know, it's kind of funny. Sometimes you're like, why did he put this in, you know, that that he lived next to the synagogue or, you know, or, or this worshiper of God, you know, it's like, but there's a reason for every detail in the Bible. And, um, and a lot of times it's, it's so like you can piece things together and, um, you know, and some people are mentioned in different places in the Bible. And so then we, it, it helps us to, to better understand things. But anyway, but this, um, Titius, um, or Titius, Justice, I don't know. Anyway, but he was a worshiper of God. He lived next to the synagogue. And then um, and then it talks about Crispus, who it sounds like he, well, he was the leader of the synagogue, but he believed in the Lord. Um, and clearly Paul had gotten, Paul or somebody um, had gotten to him. And so that was really fantastic. What, what do you think about... Um, this dream that, um, or it says, it says it was at night. It was a vision at night. I, so would that be a dream? Maybe it's just a vision at night. But anyway, what do you, what do you think about that, Jen, what God told him? Um, I think it's something that we can yeah. hold on to in today's society too. You know, that, um, obviously don't be afraid is always mentioned many times, 365 times. Mm -hmm. um, in the Bible. So again, we're being told and Paul especially was being told not to be afraid and to keep speaking out and that, um, that God would protect him and that, that there were many in the, in the city, um, that belonged to him, you know, that were believers. So, or, you know, we're going to be coming to the faith and that's where Paul needed to keep doing what he was doing. Yeah. Yeah, and it, you know, it seemed to, um, it says, and, you know, like at the verse, the beginning of verse 11, so it says, and he settled there a year and six months. So, you know, whatever, you know, whatever you get out of what God told him, I, I, I believe, um, I believe the same as you. Like, I, I think that's like a message for us today. Um, but for Paul, it was also a message to say, stay and do the work stay and do the work and and it says that he taught the word of god among them and um and we know you know that out of out of corinth came a lot of amazing believers and so it was clearly a you know god's plan that he would um that he would kind of hang out here and um you know it's funny because you think about oh a missionary journey you know, it's like, oh, yeah, they travel here and here and here, but he stayed there. And obviously, he's going to stay there for quite a while. And so and it's a, I think it was it's a good example, too, of obedience mm -hmm. of, you know, listening to God and 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 abiding and being obedient and doing what God asked him to do. He could Absolutely. have said, really, God, I don't want to stay here anymore. These people aren't listening to me. <laughs> You know? Yeah, that's what we just saw, literally. So yeah. he was probably frustrated and um but there were powerful people there. Um uh, but yeah, like yeah, that's it's a that's a good uh it's a good observation, uh, Jen, that he he was obedient. And mm -hmm. even if he was frustrated, he stayed and and did God's work. Yeah, because God told him to. Now, sometimes we stay too long because we're not listening, you know, so it can go both ways. But he he did what God asked of him. He did. He did. So um, 
But by the time we roll around to um, by to verse twelve, um, you know the politicians have changed, the the faces have changed, and and it sounds like you know, like the winds have changed there too, and now all of a sudden, you know, it's it it it's they're going to come after him, and I guess that would also say to me, hey, maybe it's time to leave. <laughs> Right. Um, so yeah. So it, you know, we it says in the in um, in the commentary that I have, it talks about it, verse thirteen. It says Paul was charged with promoting a religion not approved by the Roman law, and so that's why they're going to this governor, or my my version says pro council, but you know he was the leader, and it says so. This charge amounted to treason. Paul was not encouraging obedience to a human king, or he, I'm sorry, he was not encouraging obedience to a human king other than Caesar, nor was he speaking against the Roman Empire. Instead, he was speaking about Christ's eternal kingdom. So as the Jewish leaders are going to try, obviously as they tried towards Jesus, they're always going to try to, they, they seem to want to use the Roman law and the Roman court when they think they can, you know, they can do away with somebody. So that's Correct. probably. It, in the, uh, at least in the commentary was somewhere that I had read it. I don't remember where exactly. I don't think I highlighted it. Um, I forgot to. Was that um, like Christianity, they kind of wanted to keep it as like a subsidiary of Judaism. So they that law that you were just talking about couldn't be enforced for Christians. Right. They didn't want to proclaim Christianity as a new religion because then that law, Roman law, would be in effect. Right. Right. That, you know, they'd be blaspheming um, or, you know, or because the, the Jews were okay. Yes. You know, the Jews, the Jews got lumped into something in Roman law and they said, you know, it's okay that these people do things this way. But yeah, I mean, for a long time, and obviously as Christianity, you know, came onto the scene, people didn't know what to do with it. Is it Judaism? Is, you know, like, well, Jesus was a Jew. So, you know, so that I, we can see how that, how that worked. And obviously all of the apostles went to the synagogue um, and were part of the synagogue. So, the Roman people who don't know, you know, apples from oranges here, they're like, oh, yeah, probably just all Jew, all Jewish people. Um, but then, of course, the Romans, you know, but then the Jewish people are going, hey, wait, they're not they're not doing what we're doing. So very yeah. confusing for the yeah. for the Romans. But, yeah, the Romans were kind of like you deal with your own inner squabbling about, you know, about laws and rules and absolutely such. i you probably know, I would have said the same i would have been yeah, like have time for your squabbling here you know yeah. you're wasting my time is kind of what what he ends up saying and they're you know they're clearly like upset with each other they're clearly unreasonable and you know with each other i mean all the way down to you know taking um the leader of the synagogue and beating him in front of the judgment seat. He's like, y'all are angry and you've got issues and and why don't you go deal with your own religion because you know, like he like he said, I think um he said in, in fourteen, he said it if it, if it was a matter of wrong or of a vicious crime, but like nobody, you know, nobody's been murdered. Nobody's stealing. Nobody's, you know, he's like, this is, this is like your thing. Like, like you said, please don't waste my time. Please stop yep. bothering me. Go home. So there you go. But yeah, but the poor guy um, who got beaten, <laughs> that's not what he was expecting for that day, I'm sure. <clears throat> and, you know, it, it talks about in our, um, in our, uh, in our commentary it talks about um, Crispus, you know, and, and he had been the leader, but he and his family were converted and they became Christians. And so Sosthenes, or Sosthenes was chosen to take his place. And so 
It says the mob, the people who beat him, they could have been Greeks venting their feelings against the Jews for causing turmoil, or the crowd may have included Jews. Um, in any case, they beat him for basically losing the case, you know, for kind of, uh, for not providing enough um, um, bad I things, yeah. evidence. Yeah, that's it. And, um, and so, yeah, they just... Uh, Somebody was going to pay, right? They were literally all riled up. <laughs> they were like, mob mentality. Not, not a good thing. Not yeah. Good thing. No. Embarrassing, for sure. For sure. So um, just, just a reminder, if you're popping on and you're studying Acts 18 with us, we would love it if you would just say hi. Um, John and, and Paul, Pastor Paul have already said hello um <clears throat> on a on our um on our live.exclaim.org platform but if you're on our facebook platform feel free to say hello too um and just throw in anything that you're interested about talking about or interested in talking about or or anything or just say hi <laughs> all right well we will go ahead and pick back up in verse 18 of acts 18. Paul stayed in Corinth for some time after that and then said goodbye to the brothers and sisters and sailed for the coast of Syria, taking Priscilla and Aquila with him. Earlier at Censoria, Centuria, Paul had shaved his head according to Jewish custom, for he had taken a vow. When they arrived at the port of Ephesus, is it, it's not, is it Ephesus? No. Wait, um... Yeah, in, in 21? In 18, 19. Oh, in 19. Mine Ephesus. says, mine says Ephesus. Okay. That's what we'll go with. Okay. Paul left, Paul left the others behind, but while he was there, he went to the synagogue to debate with the Jews. They asked him to stay longer, but he declined. So he left saying, I will come back later, God willing. Then he set sail for Ephes, from Ephesus. The next stop, was at the port of Caesarea. From there, he went up and visited the church at Jerusalem and then went back to Antioch. After spending some time in Antioch, Paul went back to Galatia and Phrygia, visiting all the believers, encouraging them and helping them to grow in the Lord. There so we go. He, was, he was on the move. On the move. So, yeah, they, they just kind of wrapped up that second missionary journey of the Apostle Paul's and said, all right, he hit here, 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 and here. So that's that's totally fine. Um, you know, obviously it, it was it was nothing nothing needed to be recorded in the book of Acts at this time. And so, so that's okay. That's where we kind of go, you know, if it's not in the Bible, it's not for us to know at this point. So... You know, let's focus on the other stuff. Um, but it, you know, it is kind of nice that it says that he, you know, Priscilla and Aquila went with him. Um, so that was, that was um, just, again, nice to know that all that was happening. So, so yeah, so then he went on to Antioch and he, w he hung out for a while there and then he started on the move again. And so basically verse 23 is the beginning of his third missionary journey and um and you know three out of three here and so it was um it's just nice to know that that's where the the line is the the dividing line between the second and the third missionary journey so um so i don't know what happens next jen all right well we're going to finish up in this last section here uh, we're going to pick back up in verse 24 of Acts 18. Meanwhile, a Jew named named Apollos. Do you want to say, is it Apollos or Apollos? I say I Apollos. Say Apollos? Yeah, Apollos. An eloquent speaker who knew the scriptures well had just arrived from Ephesus from Alexandria in Egypt. He had been taught the way of the Lord and talked to others with great enthusiasm and accuracy about Jesus. However, he knew only about John's baptism. 
When Priscilla and Aquila heard him preaching boldly in the synagogue, they took him aside and explained the way of God more accurately. Apollos had been thinking about going to Acacia, and the brothers and sisters in Ephesus encouraged him in this. They wrote to the believers in Acacia, in Acacia asking them to welcome him. When he arrived there, he proved to be of great benefit to those who by God's grace had believed. He refuted all the Jews with powerful arguments in public debate. Using the scriptures, he explained to them, the Messiah you are looking for is Jesus. Mm. So this is another, um, as, as we talked about before, like we're really, like there's some powerhouses that have bubbled up to the surface here in, in chapter 18 and, and Aquila and Priscilla, you know, we talked about um, some others, you know, Crispus and now Apollos and, and it just, you know, just kind of even just having you read over those verses, like it just sounds like the apostle Paul was really impressed with him even before, like he knew what, um, you know, what Priscilla and Aquila knew. Like, he was impressive even before that. Yeah, I think um, him coming, having studied and coming from Alexandria, um, and that he was an educated man and spoke very eloquently, I think, um, had a lot to do with it. God used it, right? God used mm -hmm. it. Um, but clearly, he had to be a bit refined. Mm -hmm. You know, he needed to learn the truth, he had some background. He knew about um, John the Baptist, but um, but he needed to know a little bit more. And of course, God put him together with Aquila and Priscilla. And so what a blessing <laughs> that that then God used his boldness to, you know, to prove the Messiah. And um, so, yeah, he was a, a fabulous guy. And, and he and he is going to continue to be a fabulous leader um, you know, throughout the scriptures. And so he's, um, yeah, just a, he's just a good guy. He's just a good guy, Mr. Apollos, Pastor Apollos, whatever he is. <laughs> but go. also to how it pointed out is that, um, with his arguments, he used scripture it wasn't just his own ideas or his theology about topics. He was using scripture to de debate the topics, which is, I think, something to take away um, from this is that you need to know your Bible. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Kind of, it's so much more helpful. Yeah. Yep. It's so that you can point to scripture and say, but wait, this is what scripture says. Mm -hmm. And the contradicts what you're saying so what do you know what are we going to go with i'm going to go with scripture absolutely absolutely and and the application of that Correct. scripture right because mm -hmm. even even satan knows scripture um right. so you know if we want to if we want to fight back against the you know the power of of the enemy we've got to know our scripture and we have to and we have to read the word just like we're doing tonight so that, you know, so that we can get, so we can understand um, mm -hmm. everything that the Holy Spirit wants to impart upon us. Because I'm telling you what, you know, when we, when we open up this Bible, and, you know, and we, we ask the Holy Spirit to literally help us understand, He does. He does. And, um, you know, Jen has read, has read the book of Acts before. I have read the book of Acts before. But each time we study it, you know, I get something different. I get, you know, I get excited for different reasons. I get challenged for different reasons. Um, there's just, there's nothing like the scripture. I don't know, I don't know why I fought studying it for so long in my life. <laughs> I just, I thought it was boring. I thought it was, you know, all through my 20s, like I, I kind of couldn't be bothered with it. Yeah, I think, I mean, at least for myself, you know, growing up, it, the, the Bible was, you know, King James Version, a lot of these and nows, and, you know, we had to study, um, study that type of, of language and literature yeah. in school, and it was like, ugh, 
I don't understand it in, you know, doing Shakespeare, studying Shakespeare. I don't understand it. How am I going to understand it reading this? So Mm -hmm. I I think that, you know, we have, we have versions um, of of the Bible that are a little bit easier to, you know, comprehend, Um, Mm -hmm. not as many of the these and those maybe, maybe that's helpful, a little bit more helpful. But I know growing up when I was younger, that's what it was for me was like, man, it's hard enough. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. When the new King James came out, everybody was like, oh, my goodness. You know, and obviously we've blown way past that because, you know, even with technology, like it's it's a lot easier to to do translations now. And and then, of course, printing and and a lot of people I know don't even use printed Bibles anymore. And, you know, they're you know, they're using their phone and they're highlighting all different things and um, you know, and, and they, and they have like all of the translations at their fingertips anyway, but it's just the scriptures, you know, just as Apollos, um, showed it, it's powerful. And, um, and so opening up the Bible and, and just reading, I mean, you know, we're, we're just reading with you and we're just talking about it. Maybe you have your commentary. We have some commentaries, but we're not trying to make it complicated we're just Mm -hmm. like opening of the word and just allowing it to bless us and it always does right and hopefully too with the with reading the bible is that you know it may not be a, a particular scripture that you are being hit with maybe it's the person maybe this you know like oh i want to know more about this apollos guy or you know, how he was used or, you know, reading about how others were used in the Bible, mm-hmm. you know, and how, how, like, for instance, how Paul, you know, how his life totally changed, how he was one way, he met Jesus, and now his life was totally different. And so there's those kinds of things, too. There's good examples of, of godly people in the Bible as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not just just verses that, you know, you kind of, you know, your grandmother would cross stitch on a pillow, you know, that we kind of all know those, those, those verses. There's also great stories of everyday people that were used to do great things. Yeah. And that can be us. Mm -hmm. That can be us. And so it's, yeah, it's just great, great to see that you're right. They're just, they're just people. And they're doing the work of the Lord just like we're supposed to do. So, so that is Acts 18, y'all. We uh, we are basic. We are.